All right, so we have the Riverport Gin up this morning for Riverport Gin, and uh, I'd have been a little disappointed if this wasn't your request. And look, I'm not, I've, you know, the last few days I've been going over some of these uh, all timers, and I just feel like I'm not really finding my way through them correctly. You know, I'm trying to go blow for blow, time stamping them. They did this, and then this, and then this, and. I just, I'm getting a little cluttered by the end, you know, I feel like all of them, they're just, they, they start out okay, and then by the end of the, the end of the recap of the jam, it's just gone to hell. So, I was going to try to approach this one a little differently here, you know, it took place in Missouri, that caught me off guard, I really forgot that this was in Missouri. And also, I saw the videos on YouTube, nearly a million views now on YouTube, so that's pretty strong for a fish song. You know, it's been there for nearly a decade now. And then we have, um, not only that, but it was also a show opener. And uh, that also, I forgot that. And then that they also opened the second set with a nearly 15-minute Buried Alive. So a few other facts about the show surrounding this uh, all-time bathtub gin. And there are many bathtub gins. You got the Marat gin. You have the Lint gin. The Magnaball gin. And of course, here we are with the Riverport gin. And to, you know, what set this apart a little bit from the uh, the Runaway Gym and the David Bowie that I listened to uh, yesterday. And then we got the Boise Bag coming up here soon. We have got uh, this one, man. It just there, there wasn't like weirdness. There was no shenanigans. There was no like trippy, eerie part. It was just pretty much playing from beginning to end. You know, they start out with bathtub gin, slowly gets into a jam like it often does, and then it just fine. That there was none of this like, oh, Trey's gonna you know kind of take front and center, or you know, Paige is gonna have a moment. We're gonna get like a bass solo here. Never really a bass solo. There's never really any solos, like solo, solo. There's always something going on. So anyhow, there was none of that, though. It was just all of them. Bam. You know, I don't know if there was something going on pre-show. You know, I don't know. But they sure found it early. And um, it kind of stayed there, I guess. You know, maybe it didn't change up a lot. But once they found that groove where all four guys were just connected, very joyous sound, of course. You know, it didn't have like a... Uh, you know, as much as I like kind of the hard, dark, heavy stuff, this was not that. This was more of uh, what I think people would maybe throw the B word at. And then um, it did slightly shift it, you know, just only a slight shift, though. I wouldn't say it was funk, but it went from just like this joyous rock and roll to a little more, you know, the bass was a little more involved, Paige getting a little bit louder. But then they carried that sound for a while. So really, there was only a couple of different sounds. It wasn't one of them ones where there was three or four different jams within the jam, maybe two, and there was only a slight difference. There was no weirdness, no shenanigans, none of these long periods of just like wasted space where they were just playing around, like kind of deciding, are we going to another song? Are we staying here? None of that, man. It was just pretty much foot on the gas and let's go, Autobahn style, so. That was, I see, I felt a little better about that Riverport gin, you know, overall, I, I definitely two thumbs up, way up, in fact, off the camera, two thumbs up, you know, five, five and a half out of six stars, I don't know why it's not a six, to tell you the truth, I guess just because it's not my all-time favorite, I mean, it might not even be my all-time favorite gin, it would be in my top five gins, though, for sure. And many other people agree. Truncated Slay, who was not going to make it this far into the video. I don't know. That guy's got time for a fucking 35-minute song, but he can't make it through one of my videos. That fucking guy the other day, he was like, oh, how, how old's the tree? I don't read the description, man. Come on. Sit here and talk shit about him because I know he won't make it this far. Guy's not even a member. Truncated Slay. He's real busy, though, actually. I'm just giving him some shit here. and busting his chops just in case he does make it this far. He won't, though. Another one of these, like I've talked about before, Riverport Gin, if you'll allow me a moment here in your video. I, um, I, uh, I used to call into Sports Talk Radio when I was like, I don't know, 18 to 21 years old, and I only did it to hear my own voice. I didn't really listen to the show. I didn't add to the conversation. You know, sometimes I was just like way out of context. They might have been talking about the Reds and Barry Larkin. I got a damn Cleveland Browns question or something, you know, I don't know. So I just did it to hear my own voice, and every now and then I do suspect there's a there's a few people that aren't really watching these videos at this point. They're just commenting, looking for a boom. You know, they're fishing for a boom or something. I don't know what's going on. Don't feel guilty. It's probably not you. It might be you though. It's definitely truncated sleigh, Mr. Busy over there. The guy's gonna be an astronaut or something. I forget. He's doing something. Uh oh, we gotta go.